and Hello, we're live everyone. we are live hope Hello. everyone is doing great today so many of you already and we got 15 attendees already we'll give it a few more seconds see if anyone else wants to join in and then meanwhile we can also go live on facebook um yeah. just to see just making sure everything's working fine While we're waiting, actually, um, let's tell me, tell me where you guys are from. Tell me your names, where you guys are from, what companies are you from, where, where your guys' company is located. Pop it all in the chat. Let's let's start talking to each other. I see we already have 20 people in here. Um, so, yeah, go ahead, put it in the chat and let's get this conversation started. Mm hmm. I know it's a quite new one this morning. Oh, from mm -hmm. Minnesota. Amazing. Bet the weather up there. Is it still quite cold up there? We're having an unusually warm snap for this time of year down uh, well, up here in Canada. In Toronto, good morning. I know I've always heard about Minnesota nice. I just finished this last season of Fargo. And honestly, I could get used to Minnesota. Good morning from Florida. Fritz, Fritz Hi, Missy. Lovely to have you in. Hoping the weather down where you are is a little bit warmer. We've also got Texas. Oh, my goodness. So many warm places. I'm getting uh, getting jealous. Not Portland. Portland. UK. Good from the UK. Fellow Brits. Hello. Hi, Jenna. Illinois. You know, I was just in Illinois over the weekend, actually. I was in Chicago. Again, unusually warm weather for this time of year. I was fully prepared for big snow drifts and everything was sunny. I didn't even need a coat. Yep. Breaking records. Definitely. <laughs> Morning from Colorado, Denver. Hi, John. Nice. Thank you so much for joining us today. Okay. Looks like everyone's in. All right, so uh, I think we are ready to uh, get going. We are three minutes past, so let's take you guys through. So welcome to this webinar. Uh, my name is Bobby. I don't know if any of you have ever met before, but I will be hosting this webinar today. I am the customer support team lead. So if any of you guys have ever gotten in touch with the support team, uh, you might have seen me on your email chains in there. So lovely to meet you all in person. And then we all have, uh, with us today, we have Kiri, who is going to be our co-host. So take it away, Kiri, introduce yourself. Yeah, how's it going, everyone? I'm Kiri. I may have spoken to some of you before. I'm just a customer success manager here at Inflow. Um, going to be kind of doing what I usually do if you have interacted with me before, which is showing some nice demos and uh, teaching you and educating you how you can do things in Inflow. Um, and then we're also joined with our lovely moderator, Pooja. How are you doing, Pooja? Hello, everybody. Just like you, I'm also a customer success manager with Inflow. Probably would have talked to some of you guys um, explaining during our training sessions, having intro calls with you amazing folks. And yeah, just going through your workflows, making sure you're you're getting your Inflow up and running. Um, we're as excited as you guys are to get your Inflow running your go live date it's so interesting to meet all of you with your different workflows it's it's yeah it's really fun to be a part of um the the onboarding team especially with kiri bobby with support yeah all right so i'm excited to take you guys through a little bit of a, a smorgasbord of a webinar today we got a few different topics that we're going to cover um so excited to take you through so kiri if you want to take it away and we'll start with bulk actions first of all so we're going to be doing bulk actions and then listing updates and we'll throw in a demo for you as well for both of those individually so you can see a little bit more about what we're going to be updating you on or some new things and we are also going to be chatting to you about the new currency conversion that is in i'm so excited for this one this is going to make life a lot easier especially for us sort of multinational uh, businesses out there it's going to be a really really awesome update and then of course we will have a little giveaway at the end so again thank you for joining us you automatically get entered into that giveaway all right let's get going so first 
we are going to be talking about bulk actions. So what are bulk actions and listing updates? Let's start with bulk actions first. So what is it? What's going on here? So basically all that bulk actions are is being able to implement the same change or the same actions across multiple different selections. So essentially, instead of having to do lots of different clicks going on, you are able to do one click or one large section of clicks, and then you can do the whole thing all in one. But these apply to lots of different areas. So specifically for products, it means you are now able to bulk action for printing labels and deactivating. For sales orders and for purchase orders, you can bulk action for emailing, printing, invoicing, uninvoicing, assigning and paying. You can do for customers and vendors. You can update your custom fields. That's going to be super, super helpful if you get a whole new bunch of people in all at once. And you can also deactivate them as well. So if a big change going on in the business, you can keep up with that flow nice and quickly. And then for stock transfers and adjustments, you can do emailing, printing, assigning, updating the reasons for why those stock transfers or those adjustments have happened and also cancelling them. So you can get on that nice and quick if there's maybe something you need to go back on. And of course, for manufacture orders, you can email, print, assign and cancel those all as a bulk action. Yes. So let's get on to the why and who can do this. So Kiri, you want to move on to the next one for me? Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so why are we doing this and who can do it? So the main thing that we're doing of why bulk actions have come in is mostly to save you time, right? Time is money and we want you guys to be working smarter and not harder. Nobody needs to be dealing with sort of multiple clicks all at once. Really good example of this is avoiding massive email chains and unnecessary amounts of paperwork that you have to do individually. So for example, if you have a customer who has been with you for a really long time, and they're asking for all of their invoices, maybe for the quarter, maybe for the year, maybe for forever, because they may be doing some tax updates, for example. Before, you would have to go and send every single one of those invoices individually as a separate email. Please excuse my cat. He's perked up at the idea of saving some time. Um, <laughs> and now you're able to go into that customer, go into their records, select all of the invoices that are necessary. You can do 20 selections on any of these things all at once. So 20 at a time can be bulk actions. And you can send that all at once, all together. So again, saving you so much time, saving you having to have a huge influx in outboxes, inboxes, saving your customers time, everybody's happy. Another reason why we're doing this is of course, if you take identical action, it's gonna just minimize human error. We've all done it before where, you know, we've been doing something in a rote system and you sort of like click, do this, click, do this. And after a while you realize that one, about like a third of the way in, you accidentally click the wrong thing and now you gotta go all the way back and figure it out. And it's just gonna take you all that extra time. Now, you just don't have to worry about it. You know that all that one action was done exactly the same way for those 20 at a time. So you can keep that nice and easy. And this will be available currently in the web app only. I believe that is going forward. This will be a web app only uh, position. So if you're not currently a web app user, I do highly recommend that you take the plunge and you switch on over. So speaking of side. switching on over so we can see, uh, Kiri, would you like to take us through a demo on a few of those that we've mentioned so far? So yes, how is this I would love to. I would love to. So let's take a look at how some of these bulk actions work. Um, and let's start off with how purchase order, orders are. You know, generally, that's how everything kind of flows into Inflow. So we'll start here at the beginning. So I have a couple orders currently open and I'm selling a lot of coffee. It's nice and early. So I thought coffee was pretty fitting for everyone. Um, sorry to any tea drinkers out there, but uh, we're going to stick to coffee at the moment. So right now we can see that we have different headers here at the top that we have control over, right? We can already filter things like our locations, our statuses, you know, looking at vendors specifically. Um, but we want to tackle what's actually happening on this list, right? Um, there might be reasons why I have to do some of these. We can see that some of these are paid, some of them are unpaid. Um, and everything starts off by selecting. So as soon as you might notice, if, if you have been using Inflow for a while, this has probably been something that was very new to you. Um, you now have these little boxes where I can check off the, the orders that I actually want to affect in this situation. As soon as I do that, I'm actually gonna now see this new header pop up at the top here. 
where it's actually giving me what Bobby was speaking of, the different ways that I can interact with those different sales orders. Whether I want to mark some of them as paid, if I do want to print off all those invoices, do I want to email these out? I have the ability to assign my current users that are in the app, or what's a big one that I, and I'm just a huge fan of, is updating custom fields kind of all in one action. And of course, canceling orders. So I'll show a couple of these on the purchase order side. I'll show them on the sales order side. And then we'll show some stuff in the products. So I think those are going to be the main ones that we're all going to play around with. So um, let's take a look at some of these that may not be paid yet. So let's go to some of our unpaid orders here. And say I finally have gotten told by my um, vendors that, you know, they have gotten their money. I've sent the money off. I've got the confirmation that they have got the money off for these uh, three here. I can now go and say that I've actually paid my vendor these. I can state, you know, I'm paying them the, uh, you know, a check. Um, if I had a reference number, I can put it there. Um, and I can make a remark here that I have paid you. Um, now, the big thing to just keep in mind with this is that this really only works for fully paying orders. You don't have the ability to put in partial payments at this point. Um, so just keep that in mind. I'm sure that will come down later down the road, but as of right now, you do have to do it where it's actually going to finalize and pay everything all out for you right then and there. So you'd have that ability of being able to mark that through. Um, I can come in here. We know that those are, are paid um, and then ready to go off. Um, the other thing as well is I do select a couple of them here. Whoops go back into my all um say i need to actually send you know an email out to a few of these folks now i don't personally have my account set up an email but you can see what that would look like i can actually have a couple of them selected um you know select a few more here and i can actually email my purchase orders off to my vendors if i wanted to send a bunch of those off to my vendors to say hey i'm ready to buy some new stuff from you um maybe along the way i come and realize oh there's some of these i want to actually um, cancel. You know, maybe that deal fell through on something like this. I can select it. I can select another one and I can cancel all those orders all at once as well. Um, so on these, of course, and I wanted to intentionally show this, that if you do have that there has been inventory already been taken and moved because these are fulfilled, you will still get met with something. Again, everything here is to help with reducing human error. So it's obviously thinking about these things um, because that would have a negative impact on some of your products, right? But you can see from there that I would have the ability if I needed to cancel out a bunch of these orders that are acceptable to be canceled, you do have that ability to do that there. Um, I'm going to quickly hop into sales orders just to show a little bit on that side as well. So I'm going to go to my sales order list. Um, and then another thing I want to show in this case too is also how you can select. So you saw me clicking earlier different um, orders over there. But if you actually also hold the shift button, I can actually select a bunch of them all at once and select them like that. So this is super handy when you have like a big list and that you need to get, you know, from one area to the bottom, right? Um, of course, you also saw that select all, which Bobby also noted that you can only select up to 20, but then there might be those situations where I just need to get a whole row of them and I can just kind of do that. Instead of having to click one individually, I can hold that shift button, get my little highlight and click the bottom one so that it will click everything that was there from before. So that's also super handy as well in terms of saving you time. Um, I'm going to deselect these and I'm just going to do some quick actions here. So again, Say I need one of my reps to pay attention to a couple of these orders. I can now assign Pooja to some of these orders for me. And that way, if I did need her to be aware of that, I can have her set in there so that she would get a notification on her end that these orders are connected to her. Mm. Lastly, I am also going to go into our product list here. And looks a little different. Um, but also a way that you can also update very unique things on this end. The same actions take place. So again, that shift feature also does work here as well. Um, if I needed to select there, the select all option also works too. The only thing that's really changing are the, the categories and the options that are at the top here. So again, in this scenario, 
say I was coming through some of my products and, oh, I realized, hey, this glass mug is not coffee. Um, I need to change the category of that. That doesn't actually need to be there. Um, and there should, I think, be another one that I made. Oh, a smart mug here. And that, again, is definitely not coffee. So I could go and set a category, set them all to the same category now. These are all coffees. Um, and I should be able to flip that. I'm not sure why I'm getting that action right then and there at this moment. Let me give this a quick little refresh. It could be that I also have these on open orders. Maybe this is just my internet acting a funny. All right, let's go back in here again. Let's go in here. Let's also pick my smart mug. Let's flip that into coffee there. Oh. Well, it should be flipping in there. I'll go and check that during while we, while Bobby starts talking again, but I think there's probably something in my account acting up. But that should be definitely able to flip that into that category for me when I have those all selected. But, um, you know, the actions are there. This is probably just something with my demo. Same thing that you can do with custom fields. So if I did want to update a bunch of custom fields that I made into my account, I would also be able to update that there in a bulk action. So in this case, and I'll show this later when we get into our, some of our listing options, that I have a tier scenario set up in here. And that if I did need to ever change anything to a bunch of them all at once, um, so say I wanted to change a couple of these products, not from premium into something like a mid tier, I would be able to change that in there by the items that I have selected and be able to update that all in, as once. And then I now have changed that tier of that custom field to the mid tier level. All right. Um, and yeah, and more to come when we get into listing actions. And Bobby, I'm going to hand this back over to you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Kerry. That was awesome. All right. So speaking of, we're going to get right into our next little section, which is listing updates. So this one is available for both web and desktop users. So if you are currently favoring one or the other, don't have to worry about this. This will be available for all of our cloud users at the moment. And what this means is that you're gonna be able to customize the columns on different lists and other screens. So for example, if you are in a sales order screen and you have different sort of custom fields that you have or your columns that you like to have set up in a specific order. So for example, you like to have it with the sales order all the way to the left, and then you like to have the customer name, and then you like to have something else, you'll be able to actually keep those set up exactly how you want it. And you won't have to worry about, oh, okay, I'm now no longer able to drag it how I need. I've got to maybe like take it out, put it in a CSV, or I've just got to manually check every line because it's not how I personally do my order or how I do my workflow. And I'm using the word personally for a really good reason because this is actually uh, customizable per user for your account. So let's say you've got a big team and even though like two different people are maybe doing the same actions, but they have different workflows, right? Everyone likes to have a little bit of personalization and what works for them better for what they like to use, even though it's the same information. So what will be really great now is that each one of those users can click and drag those columns to how they need it to be listed for their personal use, and it will save it for those users individually. So again, if I'm sitting next to Kiri, for example, he likes to have his um, the price of his order all the way to the left, but I actually prefer to have the order number all the way on the left. It's not gonna have to be that, oh, I change it, and then when Kiri logs in, it's changed for him, so he's gonna have to change it, and then when I log back in, it's changed again. It's none of this back and forth. You can have it really set up. So it's the same information, but it's set up how you prefer to read it. And that just makes life easier for you and all of the people who are working on your team because you're going to be able to find things easier. Because again, everyone searches for things in a slightly different way and what works for their individual workflow. And speaking of that, I'm going to let Kiri take this away and show us a little bit more about what that can mean for you and your team. Yes. And just quickly before I get into some of that listing actions, I figured out what I was goofing up on with the actual mugs. Um, when I was setting that category, I was sillyly selecting coffee again when I should be checking accessories. That's how I would flip it there. So my fault on that, just getting that on the screen there. But to get into that as well, um, so listing actions are kind of generally in the same area of where the bulk action information was. 
Um, but you are going to be dealing with this little customized header um, tab here. So here is where now I can set what the unique way that I would like my list to look. And I can play around with these in so many different ways. So product is obviously something that needs to be there. You can't actually get rid of it. But say I am somebody where really there's only a few things I care about. Maybe I only care about our quantity and I care about our price. The category of it right now is not something that I'm too worried about. I can actually take that out and you can see right away that that is actually going to remove that field for me here. Um, here's where I can then start adding in the different areas that do matter to me. I can throw in something like a SKU or a barcode. Um, and then now I can even play around with this. If product is important at the beginning, but then the SKU is the next important thing to me, I could have the SKU field actually be the second option that shows up there. Um, I could have the normal price come after that because that's something else I care about, and then quantity and then barcode. And then I can have this set to me specifically of how I want that. And maybe in this scenario, I do want to know what my actual tiers are. Um, and then obviously if I did make um, a mistake here, I can reset this and set everything back to default if I did want to. Um, this can also work with the filter options on here. So again, if there are ways that you do want to search based off of what you have set in your list here, you can also set up different filters at the top that make it easier to search through the information that you have actually set up in your actual list, right? So now that I have this set up, I can now say, okay, I want to see all my premium tiers together. Okay, these are my premium products here that I know of. I can get to them super easy, found them super fast. Say I'm just grabbing what the barcode was for whatever reason. I can now get that barcode of those two items super quick and know that I'm not having to go through this giant list to be able to see everything. Um, with the filtering, there's different ways I could even break this down if I did want to see, hey, what are all my premium stuff? But I only want to see the stuff that has a quantity of, you know, you know, zero to a hundred or something like that. Um, you know, I'm not worried about if it has anything more than that. Um, I could also then go and filter that out too and just bring me up the quantity that's there. And then I can use my tier list that I've made as a custom field in order to find all the premium stuff that is on that list right there. And that bleeds into essentially everything. You know, everything essentially has a customizable way that you can make it to your own specific way of doing things. Um, again, if I go into my sales order list and I go into my custom list here, there's different ways that I can actually take things and add them into that list. Maybe I do want to see from um, just one shot, has everything been paid? You know, obviously the balance field kind of lets you know everything here, but then you could also use that paid field as another way of being able to figure that out. Maybe due dates are important. I'm somebody who I am doing some of the shipping, right? And I need to follow this due date. So this is helping me keep on track um, with my own list of if I have to put that beside my order date, I'd be able to see something like that due date of when something needs to come there. Um, Again, customer tends to be something super important. Maybe that's the next thing that I want to see on there. And then I can filter this again based off of all my Bruce banners. You know, all of his orders are showing up on here and I can have that customer list here. Um, and then that way I can kind of focus on that too. This is really helpful when you're doing something that has been assigned to you as well. You can always see what has been assigned to you or another team member, if you're an admin, if you wanted to get a list of all their orders that are currently you know, open, pending, that need to receive orders, um, you could have that set on your list. And again, everything is going to be catered to how you want to be able to view it. Um, again, if I go back into my purchase order list, um, you'll have very similar headers that you can edit over on that side as well. Um, on this case, I also made a custom field called customs, which maybe I'm updating this as my orders are going through customs and I need to know, you know, which ones are those ones. And those are the only ones that I need to actually focus on right now, right? So I could have it so that if customs are super important, let me bring this closer so I can get a nice quick screenshot of all the ones that are currently in there. And this is where something could tie into how your bulk actions are. Maybe everything has gone through customs already and I want to edit that and it has completed that process. I can now come in here and then update all those at once based off of a custom field, a field that isn't currently in inflow that I was able to add in there that's catering to you know, my specific business. Um, 
And if you don't know, um, you know, how custom fields are made when you actually go into a purchase order or a product or a sales order, there'll usually be an area where you can manage those custom fields and throw them in here. Because I think that is going to be one of the most popular reasons of when it is used, at least from people that I've spoken with. Um, that's something that has come in a lot, um, you know, handy when it comes to having these lists because, you know, people need to track things in so many different ways, you know, that sometimes inflow may not be catering. It has to be for everybody, everybody. So when you have to get something a little bit more niche, you know, you can have those fields in there to be able to break that stuff down a lot easier for you too. And then you can obviously have that in here too. If I ever wanted to filter by it and see all my completed orders, I can then filter it out so that, hey, only show me what those completed orders are. And maybe I'm coming in here next and selecting these and verifying, you know, payment status, you know, after that, you know, I can again, come and select them here, market is paid. And then I can say, I paid these two orders and they've gone out, right? Um, just to touch quickly on, cause I know that sometimes uh, some folks may be going into manufacturing and maybe, you know, needing to filter in that. I know I haven't touched on it too much, but um, again, it works in the same way as purchase orders and sales orders generally work. Um, they are um, a little bit more limited on the fields. It gives you a lot more room for, you know, custom fields to be entered in here um, to find where those custom field areas are. They would just be in the top part here. Like in this case, I have expiry date, you know, um, in this case, I'm bundling coffee and I might be making little kits and I just want to make a record for myself that, hey, I don't want to go end up selling something, you know, past that date. And maybe I made this so that I know that it's expiring next year in June or something like that. Um, I could have a list here where if I needed to ever go back to those manufacturing orders of the ones that might have expired, I'd be able to get a nice, real simple list of that as well. And again, it works in the same very um, same way as a lot of the orders come to. Um, I can update those custom fields. So if I did need to update the expiry dates or print off or email or even assign to somebody internally, or maybe I did realize, you know what? I actually didn't need that order, you know, that I made a little while back. This one, I'm actually going to go and cancel and just leave that one there for me. But you can see it's very similar. So again, if you have a lot of people dealing with manufacturing orders, that will come in handy there. And then I'll also just quickly touch on the customer list too. Um, which is again, very similar to how everything else is functioning. Um, again, there will be a lot of different ways that you can do it in customer fields. So, um, if I am looking at, you know, people, uh, based off of a certain website, or maybe there is a taxing scheme or a pricing scheme that's also set in there, I could filter that in a way, um, as well to be able to come up with that payment terms would probably be a great way too that you could use. So if you did have people in, you know, net 30 or net 60, and you wanted to see all of that, um, on your list there, which customers pay you a little bit later, or then later on, you know, update that too, through a bulk action. Um, sadly, you won't be able to update the payment terms, but there are custom fields that you'd be able to, to edit on there. And again, finding those custom fields, um, within a actual customer list is, again, just in the manage area there. All right. And again, won't touch on it too much, but vendor list is very, very similar to how customer lists would work. They essentially are the same thing, just different ways of selling or buying. Um, but yes, so these are the different uh, items, again, that you can see that are in there that you can customize your list to. So, you know, currency might be very handy, which we'll get into right after this. Um, but again, if you're filtering by an address or a country, you'd be able to have all those details in there as well as things are being entered in. So you just would have to make sure your customer profile is all filled out in here. Um, so then that way, all that information is filterable within your lists over there. Um, and that essentially is listing updates. All right, Bobby, I'm going to hand this Amazing. back off to you. Thank you so much, Kerry. That's awesome. Lots of new, exciting features to help everyone out. And I know for me personally, just being able to customize things as much as possible is always the best, best way for me to just get more of it done and quicker and just not spend so much time going, hang on a second, why is this over here? That doesn't make any sense. 
All right, so now the one that I'm particularly excited for, which is currency conversion. So this is a great new update, um, especially for anyone who is working in sort of multiple currencies across buying and selling. Uh, Kira, if you want to head over to that next slide for me, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So what's going on with currency conversion? So as you all currently know, for those of us who, who are using multiple currencies, it's a really manual kind of analog process at the moment, right? You've got to go in, you've got to go check what that conversion rate is for whatever currency you're using, and you have to manually input it. The great new feature now is that this is actually going to be an automatic option. So there will be a little toggle where you can either keep it as manual. So if you prefer to add in your own specific currency conversion, if you like to keep it the same, you can stay with that. You don't have to change over. We're not forcing you into the feature. However, if you would like to come along with us for this, it now means that this will actually update every 24 hours. I don't have a specific time on exactly when that update happens, but according to our devs, it's supposed to be overnight um, during sort of North American hours. So it'll be sort of anywhere between um, sort of 8 p.m. all the way through to 6 a.m., um, generally Eastern Standard Time, but we are trying to narrow that down for you. So just in case you are not North America based, just bear that in mind that that's sort of when that update will occur, most likely. And this just means, again, if you are working with multiple currencies for buying and selling, if you just need it to be updated frequently and it's just one more task that you don't have to now do manually, you can automate this. Um, it will go ahead and do that. It will simplify that process for you super easily. And of course, your accountants will be happy. Now, a great question that I'm already starting to see here is, wait a second, if we've already gone ahead and sort of updated something, it's filled, it's already a done order, and the currency then, um, that conversion changes going forward. So let's say I do an order today, that's a particular currency conversion, but tomorrow that conversion changes. Will that go back and change that previous order that was already done? No, so this is not a retroactive change in the conversion, it will only do it for new orders, new currency conversions from the time it updates. So you won't have to worry going back about being, hang on a second, I put it in as this, you know, two months ago, why is it looking different now? It will stay set in stone for whatever it was when that order was finalized or set. So you're all good. Um, again, if you prefer it not to change at all going forward and you're like, no, I quite like it to stay exactly how it is, um, it, you can also go ahead on that toggle and turn it off so that you can manually input it as well. Um, and Kiri is going to show us a little bit about what that looks like. Thank you. Yes. So let's start here on our homepage. So when you are first setting this up, um, you can find all this information if you go underneath your uh, global settings here, currency and exchange rates, right? This is where you're obviously going to be setting things like your home currency. This is where you could set up custom exchange rates. In this case, I, I set up something for the Jamaican dollar where you can set, you know, that exchange rate in here. If I ever wanted to put, you know, Australian dollars and set that up in there, given me here. But if I did want to edit it, I could say what the actual number is here if I did actually have that number differently or set up in there, or maybe there was a discrepancy in what spewed out in here, you do have that ability of being able to make that change in there. Um, so how you'll set this up is again in your pricing schemes and that's just underneath order here. So I had one set up for Canadian pricing. Um, I could have another one set up for, let's go into Australian um, and let's change that up in here. So now what I could do is for my products, if I go into a product list here now, and say I did want to go into my instant coffee here. Now I have these different pricing schemes. So I can say in Australian is $5, in Canadian it's $7. Um, and if I now take this item and I put it onto a sales order, I should be able to get that currency conversion also live here. So if I start a new sales order here and I'm gonna sell this to Tony. I can now select my pricing scheme and currency from here. So if I wanna sell this in Canadian, 
I can now get that instant conversion rate already there for me. And I know this is a Canadian price and I'm also getting that lovely tag with it. So that way I'm not messing up anything and not knowing that it's not going to be in that current uh, person's currency rate. Um, and I know what I'm actually going to be getting back in that moment right then and there if I didn't need to do it. And I could, even from here, if I did need to edit it and I didn't want to go to that screen, I could still go and edit that actual manual conversion rate in this field here if I did need to make some type of change like within the moment there. And that'll work so simply. You know, I can switch between that very, very easy. You know, even if I made a mistake and it needed to be Australian, you can see it kind of did that quick refresh there and also put that conversion rate in there for me for what the Australian you know, dollar might be. And that'll work on both ends on the on the uh, purchasing side and also on the sales side. But um, pretty straightforward, you know, it's always, it's something that has always been there, but we just wanted to make it a little bit more accurate. And again, just to uh, reiterate what Bobby was saying. So if I had this sales order and this was completed and, you know, I have fulfilled this, I've marked this one as paid. And then tomorrow I go and sell again, something that was in, you know, the Australian currency and the exchange rate changed, at least I know on this order, it will still stay to what it was here. Um, the other thing to keep in mind too, is when it comes to reporting, if I was to run a report in my system, it's still going to only give it to me in my home currency dollar amounts. So that way it's doing the conversion for you, but then for your books and for your accounting reasons, you're still getting everything in your local currency. So that way that you know that you can add that up and you don't have to be doing that math or anything inside of the reports for you. It's kind of already doing that for you, which I think is going to be super helpful when it comes to that. Um, of course, we have articles on this and, and how um, the currency conversion works. Um, I'm sure it will have, you know, more and more improvements. And again, I'm just going to go back into the account, the area of your account where you would actually go in there and be able to see all the details about this um, that are currently in there um, when it comes to that. And of course, if you ever do, you can always change your home currency. Just be very aware that it has to go through the whole system changing that for you. Um, sometimes we'll lock you out of there. So always make sure at the beginning of when you start using Inflow to just make sure that home currency is set up correctly. And then you can get those exchange rates in there very, very accurately. Um, and that's essentially currency conversion. It's probably the, the simplest one out of them all. Um, you know, it's very, very straightforward. If you have any questions that I was not unfortunately able to answer, please feel free to reach out to our support team. And I'm just writing down um, their emails, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. support yeah, at yeah. info.com. Make sure you reach out to them if you have any questions for any feedbacks, any, any, so this is, I know this is a newer feature, but if you do have any feedbacks on things that, you know, you want to add, or you want us to consider any feedback on any of these things, please feel free to reach out to us again on with our support channel. And we will make sure to include that and then, or not include that as a feature, but like, we'll make sure to look at it. Um, and maybe if it's useful, add it to our, uh, at, at a future release date. So it was amazing talking to you guys and Bobby, do you want to sign off for us? Absolutely. So again, thank you everyone so much for being part of today's webinar. It was great to hear from all of you and some fantastic questions, comments. Again, please, if you have any questions or if you'd like to leave us some feedback on any of the things that we've shown you today or just general feedback at all, please reach out to us at support at inflowinventory.com. That is my direct team. So you never know, you might actually talk to me directly. And of course, if you have any long term questions about your account, if you want to maybe set up something new for your workflow and you're not really sure sort of how that will work on the generally larger scheme, please make sure that you're getting in touch with your customer success managers. That might be Kiri, that might be Pooja, that might be any of the others that we have out there. We really want to hear from you guys. And again, thank you so much for being part of today's webinar. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and enjoy the new features. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you, everyone. Take care.